partial fraction decomposition several methods at the same time. Let's see how this example is going to work out. I will work with the denominator, so I will leave the numerator the same, 5x squared plus 2x plus 3, all over, and I'm going to factor x squared, x squared plus 1, dx. So, first of all, there is no linear parts here. Both functions are quadratic, but the way partial fraction decomposition works, so partial fraction decomposition is kind of uh, tricky how it sees x squared x squared is not seen as a quadratic it's seen as a linear repeated twice x times x or well, basically it sees x parenthesis squared so it sees this as a, a x plus b linear squared that's how it is how it sees it linear squared since we see it as a linear squared we know how to deal with this. It's going to be a over x plus b over x squared. If it's cubed, then I will keep going. It will be c over x cubed and so on and so on. That's what we're going to have here. That's interesting to understand. But the second part is definitely quadratic. Quadratic. And for the quadratic parts, linear partial fraction decomposition, I uh, use this cx plus d, or you can do a1, a2, a3, a4, it doesn't matter how you call it, j, m, any variable, any constant you like, cx plus d all over x squared plus 1. So the idea is, if you have quadratic in a denominator, the numerator should be 1 degree less, which is linear, cx plus d versus x squared quadratic, that's what we have here. And that means we're using two cases here, the quadratic case and the linear squared. Okay, let's solve it. As always, you know what we're going to do. You kind of supposed to write down this equals to that and then multiply by the denominator. And you know I'm skipping those steps. I know it's going to be 5x cubed plus 5x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals now, the denominator is gone because I multiply by the denominator, which is x squared times x squared plus 1. Now, here I will only keep the parts which are extras, right? So, what is extra for the first case? x will cancel out with x, but x was squared, so 1x will stay, and x squared plus 1 will stay. For the second one, um, x squared cancels out with x squared, so x squared plus 1 will stay. And for the third one, x squared plus 1 will go away, but only x squared will stay. That means a is multiplied by x, multiplied by x squared plus 1, plus b is multiplied by x squared plus 1, plus cx plus d is multiplied by x squared. And this is the crazy equation which we're going to be using to solve for how many unknown constants do we have? Can you count? Let's do the Sesame Street thing. One unknown constant A, two unknown constants B, three is C, and four is D. Four unknown constants to find. So again, you can choose which method do you want to do. You want to collect the terms, collect the terms, or you want to make a good guess, make a good guess. So, uh, actually, it is interesting to compare which method will be easier here. Seems like if I plug 0, it might give me something right away. Or if I collect terms, that might be also easier. Usually, when C, X plus D is involved, then collecting terms is actually faster, surprisingly. Let's try both ways and maybe compare. Way 1 is making a good guess. For example, X equals 0. If x is 0, on the left-hand side, everything goes away except 3. On the right-hand side, a goes away, b is multiplied by 1, and then c goes away and d goes away, right? So we immediately found b. b is 3. That's good. Is it 3? Oh, interesting. So, But now what do you want to plug? So 0 was a good guess, but nothing else will make zeros on the right-hand side. 
And that's why people suggest to actually collect terms. But you can try plug something like 1. Besides b, we already know. Let's plug 1 minus 1 and see what happens. If I plug 1, it's going to be 5 plus 5 plus 2 plus 3 equals a is multiplied by 1 times 2. That's 2. b, let's substitute b right away and I will put it in red. b will be multiplied, so b is 3 multiplied by 1 plus 1, that's 2, plus c plus d, both multiplied by 1. And that did not give me neither a, not c, not d, so that actually gave me the equation. And since I need to solve the equation, maybe it made sense to collect terms anyways at the first place, but it's fine. So it's going to be 10 plus 5, 15. 15 minus 2, actually. So it's going uh, minus 6. 15 minus 6, that's 9. Right? Then I will have 2a plus c plus d. And that's my equation, and it did not give us anything. Okay, let's keep plugging. Maybe let's plug minus 1 and see what happens. Minus 1. Minus 5 plus 5. Minus 2 plus 3. That looks nice. Minus 5 and 5 goes away. Now, a will be a multiplied by minus 1, and then look at it, 1 minus 1 squared, it's 1, 1 plus 1, that's 2. Now, plus, uh, same thing, 3 times 2, right? So that's 6, because b is 3 and 1 plus 1 is 2. But this will be different, so x squared still gives you 1, because minus 1 squared is 1. But now it's going to be minus c plus d. So the new equation is now 3 minus 2, that's 1. 1 minus 6 is minus 5. Minus 5 is minus 2a minus c plus d. One more equation. And we need one more equation to have three equations for three unknowns. And they all should be different. So that's why like, you need to be creative here or just, you know collect terms and then you don't have to be creative anymore what do you want to plug now i don't want to plug anything like 0 0.5 and stuff you can plug 10 if you want let's plug 2 i mean what else it's pretty simple 0 1 minus 1 2 minus 2 3 minus 3 2 times 3 times 2 is 8 8 times 5 30 40 i always count in my head in russian so it's a little bit slower plus 4 times 5, 20, plus 4 plus 3 equals a times 2, uh, 4 plus 1, that's 5, b is 3, but now it's multiplied by 5, plus, so I have c multiplied by 2, plus d, and both are multiplied by 4. That's going to be my third equation, finally. Oh, so let's see. It's going to be 60, 67, right? 67, but minus 15 because of this guy over here. What is 67 minus 15? That is 52. 52 equals 10a plus 4 times 2. That's 8 c plus 4 d and that's the third equation and now using those three system of equations we actually are going to find a b a c and d using elimination method or substitution method so you can rewrite them nicely if you want i just remembered that this equation number one number two and number three and i can see elimination method will work really nice right away if i add these two equations so 9 minus 5 will give me 4, 2a minus 2a gives me 0, c minus c gives me 0, d plus d is 2d. So d is 2. Finally, we start fighting things. So d is 2. Now, knowing this, can I eliminate anything else? Mm, yeah, I can try. For example, I can multiply this by 8 or 5, actually. And add with, so this was equation 1 plus 2 for you to know. 
Now I will multiply equation 1 by 5 and I will add to 3, equation number 3. Multiplying by 5 will give me minus 25 equals minus 10a minus 5c plus 5d while the last equation is 52 equals 10a plus 8c plus 4d. Collecting this together, or not collecting, adding them together, will eliminate a. So 52 minus 25, what is that? 25 and 25 and 2, 27. 27 equals 3c plus 9d, but we know d, so it's actually 27 equals 3c plus 2 times 9, that's 18. This is how we can find C. C is 3. Put it in the box. And I think now we found everything. C is 3. D is 2. A is... A B is 3. So A is still missing. Hmm, that's kind of dumb. But okay, let's find A. Hmm. We can find A from any equation we have. I like the first equation. From the first equation... I will write down 9 equals 9 equals 2a, that's the one we don't know, equals c, c is, look at the boxes, 3, plus d, that's plus 2, that gives you a, a is, I think, 3, 9 minus 5, that's 4, 4 divided by 2, that's 2. Okay, it's actually 2. Finally, having all four constants, we can finish the integration. What was even the integral who remembers? I don't remember. So it's a over x. Integral a over x. a is 2. So it's 2. You know my style. I usually kick the constants outside. 2. Integral 1 over x dx b over x squared b is 3 3 1 over x squared dx that would be at least easy to integrate that's good now cx plus d over x squared plus 1 okay it's gonna be x squared plus 1 i remember that part cx plus d is 3x plus what is my d 2 dx this is what i got the first two integrals will be easy to integrate and the last one i will show you how to do it right now in a second so the first two is 2 natural log of x we know that the second one is not natural log uh, as you can see it's going to be minus 3 over x that's a power rule right x to the minus 2 integrating that but what is happening with the third one? With the third integral, which I'm going to put in blue, I will break it into two integrals. It's going to be integral 3x over x squared plus 1 dx plus integral 2 dx over x squared plus 1. Let's go back to my note. Okay, good. 3x over x squared plus 1 dx plus integral 2 over x squared plus 1 dx. Perfect. Now, what are those integrals in blue? The last integral you all know. This is arctangent, or in this case, it's actually two arctangents, right? So it's two tangent minus one of x. And don't forget, uh, you need to divide by the leading coefficient if there is any u substitution involved, but not in this case. So this one, at least we know. This one requires u substitution, as you can see. And you cannot even avoid it here. You have to use u substitution. What is your u? 
Well, one part looks like derivative of another part. If I'm choosing x squared plus 1 to be u, u is x squared plus 1. Let me change the color in case we have colored blind students to make sure they can see. Then du is 2x dx, which is almost what we need. We have, let's kick this 3 out the way I like doing it. We have x dx, but we need 2x dx. So my style is I'm multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2 outside of the integral. Then that integral will be, I will write down it separately, it will be 3 halves integral du over u, right? So it is actually a natural logarithm again, which is 3 halves natural logarithm of u plus c, plug back your x, natural logarithm, absolute value of x squared plus 1 plus c. This was done separately for this integral in the circle. Thus, the final, final, final answer is 2 natural logarithm of x minus 3x plus the one in purple, 3 over 2 natural logarithm x squared plus 1 and plus 2 arctangents. I always say arctangent, but actually write down tangent minus 1 because it's faster to write. Put this in the box and be proud that you finished such a long and annoying example. And good job if you paid attention. And if you did not pay attention, just go back a little bit and practice those little things which we just did. Look how long this example, how much time it took us to figure it out. This is the beginning. That's partial fraction decomposition with two different cases. Unfortunately, every time you have to work with cx plus d, the integration part at the very end is not going to be simple. Usually you need to work with arctangents and some kind of integration by parts or u substitutions. But the first pieces are usually simple. Either it's a power rule like here or logarithmic functions like for the first integral or the integrals we had before. Good job for watching.